All right, students, so in this uh, instructional video, I'm gonna demonstrate for you what was gonna happen in Lab 7 had you actually done Lab 7 yourself. So here we are getting started. Uh, the ingredients or reactants that we're using today are cobalt uh, chloride, as well as some hydrochloric acid. Uh, the concentrations can be seen on the bottles here. We can even see through the bottle uh, that the color of the cobalt chloride solution is not a colorless solution, but here is a sample of it. We can see that it is this lovely pink color. All right, so getting the bottle out of the way, we are going to get started with the experiment, still getting some of our prep work done. First, we are going to now mix the cobalt chloride solution and the hydrochloric acid solution in approximately a two to one ratio, so twice the volume of HCl uh, to the cobalt chloride solution. Now, if you're looking closely you might have uh, seen a flash of a color difference there, but uh, once the two solutions are thoroughly mixed, we see that the pink color of the cobalt chloride solution is still intact. All right, so let's actually start the experiment. So that the solutions now are mixed, we have our reversible reaction sitting in the uh, test tube, and it might not look like there is anything different occurring, but trust me, inside of that test tube, there is a rigorous reversible reaction occurring. So what we're gonna do right now is pipette about half of the solution into this separate test tube. This uh, separate test tube is going to act as our control. So as we are varying the temperature of the uh, solutions, and we're going to be pushing the spontaneous reaction either more forwards or more reverse according to Gibbs free energy, uh, we have something now to compare our solution or our reaction that we're changing to. Okay, so the first step here, we're going to bring out an ice bath, put our test tube with our test solution inside of that ice bath, and just let it hang out for a little bit. Right? We're going to let it chill, literally and figuratively. Now, pulling the test tube out of the uh, ice bath, Get a little sneak peek there. It doesn't look like anything is happening. All right, and even though something exciting or vigorous or color change might not be occurring at this step, totally fine, right? We're still gathering conclusions here. And so what we can gather is that at both room temperature and at these cold uh, temperatures, you know, ice bath, zero degrees Celsius, uh, it would appear as though our solution is going to remain this lovely pink color. All right, so let's move then the ice bath out of the way and let's bring in a hot water bath. So this hot water bath is approximately 70, 80 degrees Celsius. I uh, just took it off of the hot plate. I uh, don't wanna have a hot plate necessarily in front of my camera. Uh, and here we can see now an immediate change, right? So be writing in your lab notebooks uh, for those of you who have them. Um, just kidding, sort of, but not really, right? We do want to take note of the observations we're making, even though you are not going to be making them yourselves. But we can see that this solution now is turning into this beautiful cobalt blue color. So what we can gather initially, uh, it would appear as though cold temperatures, even, you know, like as hot as room temperature, but still relatively cold compared to 80 degrees Celsius, our solution is pink. And when we add our cobalt chloride mixture into hot water, uh, the solution turns blue. All right, so just to confirm these observations and to take note of the reversible nature of this reaction, let's take our beautiful cobalt blue solution and put it back into the ice bath. If our hypothesis is correct that at cold temperatures, our solution is pink, and at hot temperatures, our solution is blue, we should see this solution turning back into a pink color. All right, and this is, in fact, what we are starting to see. You can see at the bottom of the test tube, some of that pink color is starting to come back. All right, so let's let it sit in the ice bath for a little bit longer, just really bury it in that ice and let the cold temperature surround our test tube. All right, we can see now there still might be a little bit of a faint blue 
color present, uh, mix in the solution there just to really try and mix all of the cold uh, solution in with the warmer solution that might still be at the core of the test tube. But we can see that that pink color is definitely returning. All right, so it seemed like our hypothesis is standing up, uh, that the colder temperatures are bringing about a pink solution. But really, you know, what's a scientific experiment without multiple trials? Let's put this test tube back into our hot water bath just to make sure that at hot temperatures, again, this blue color is going to return. All right, we can see already that faint trickling of the blue kind of coming in from the outside of the test, outside of the test tube in. So where are we going with this, right? We're not just making some general observations here. We actually have some variables to test. So what we are going to be doing, or what you would have been doing, uh, is taking your test tubes, uh, measuring the temperature of the hot bath, varying the temperature of the hot bath, and then using a UV-Vis spectrophotometer to actually measure what is the wavelength of color that your test tube, your solution in the test tube is. And so what I'm holding up right now is what we call a cuvette. This is a uh, little piece of plastic uh, that we can put into the spectrophotometer to get a measurement for what is the wavelength and what is the absorbance of the solution at that wavelength. So we're going to add some distilled water in first. Now what distilled water is going to be useful for uh, is we're treating it as like a blank. We're telling the instrument, which now we can see that in front of us, set to 690 nanometers. Currently the machine uh, or the instrument is kind of like absorbing some ambient light. You know, there's some, uh, you know, it hasn't been like standardized or reset. And so that's what water is gonna do for us. We hit this zero uh, ABS or zero absorbance button. And now what the machine uh, is going to give us is zero absorbance of distilled water. So in other words, we, are, we have now teared our instrument for distilled water and any additional compound we put in uh, or solution we put in, the distilled water factor is going to be subtracted out from it, giving us an accurate reading for what the absorbance measurement is of the solution uh, itself or the solute in the solution itself. All right, so we're pipetting out some of that cobalt solution. Here we can see it's still that lovely blue color inside of the cuvette and we're gonna bring that over to the spectrophotometer. All right, so we're going to open up the spectrophotometer's lid, uh, put that sucker inside, and then close the lid. We wanna block out all of the white light from around, and we can see now the instrument is giving us a measurement. This is the measurement of absorbance for our cuvette. No need to hit the zero tear button again. And so you would have found five uh, data points this way of absorbance versus temperature uh, data points. And this information then can be used in the post lab to figure out uh, all of the Gibbs free energy thermodynamic information for uh, this cobalt chloride compound.